I had a request by a viewer to do a video comparing the thickness of clear coats on different makes and models, and I will honor that today the best I can. Let's start with Tesla. On the door here, we have uh, 3.7 mils. Let's compare this to a fender that we apply film to, PPF, that jumps up to 12. So that's the importance of film and coatings, especially on a Tesla. Tesla clears. Uh, the whole finish uh, as, as a system as a whole is thin, it's soft, not very high quality, so protection is very important. And also paying attention to how you correct it and using the least aggressive method necessary is also very, very important. The highest we're going to get on this is five and a half mils. Let's jump to Ford. There used to be a time and day where the clear was hard, stubborn, and thick. It's now very thin, soft, comparable to Tesla, maybe even thinner at certain points. Very disappointing. What I do want you to keep in mind is the clear coat portion of the three-layer system, which consists of primer, base coat, or color coat, and clear coat. Clear coat is the top layer we're correcting and it's only a third of what we're measuring here. Manufacturers of the color coat would love to have two mils of clear on top to protect from chemicals, UVA, UVB, and etc. However, they're barely getting enough as so as it is. So before you lay a polisher and its pad to the surface, you're already removing too much. I hope that makes sense. Those that protect motorcycles, we get a lot of Harleys to uh, put film and coatings on them as well. And this is about the average thickness. Uh, the clear coat on a Harley is very soft. Heading outside, plenty to measure. We have a full house. It's the busy season. That's what it's like. An X5 BMW, the German cars, uh, Bavarian, we used to be uh, thick and hard and stubborn. They're medium now, the newer ones, and you're getting between four and five mils. So there's a little bit of room to play with, maybe a one step and an enhancement. That's as far as I would go. Jag, that's easy. Those are mostly all thin and soft. I have one bare panel exposed, replacing uh, paint protection film on the quarter panel here. So I can give you a measurement on this panel. But the clear and uh, the finishes are thin and soft on these as well. GMC and Chevy are quite similar. Uh, Chevy is a little thicker, a little bit more stubborn, if you will. Um, so we're getting between five and a half and six, maybe six and a half mils on the GMC. And you'll get uh, sometimes even higher on a Chevy. These will be medium to hard, leaning towards hard for the most part. And tucked over here, we have a Prowler in Q, and this will represent Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge. We get a lot of Chargers and Challengers, and they're the hardest of the clear, medium, leaning towards hard at times. You're in good shape with those. They normally have enough clear to do a good one step. Subaru, for the most part, thin and soft clear coat. And finally, as I mentioned before, Chevrolet usually gives you some 
medium to hard clear coat that is rather thick. Uh, can be stubborn at times, but uh, there's plenty there. There's plenty to work with. Um, a one, an enhancement, uh, a one-step, or even a multi-step correction, you'll be perfectly fine. You should feel comfortable doing the service. I'm often recommended which paint depth gauge uh, or gauges I recommend. I carry the NYCD here in my back pocket, so I carry that around. I also have a Defelsco that will measure um, layers on top of plastic bumpers, fiberglass, and uh, then we have uh, the pelt. I do not have this one, but if you want a gauge that measures layers, the pelt, which is about 50 grand, will do it for you. Not really worth it. This here is the thickness of clear coat. Um, if they barely give us that, that's two mils, just a fraction of the thickness of a post-it, guys. That's why it's so important to pick a uh, polisher and a pad and correction fluid that is the least aggressive. Do three or four test areas on each vehicle just to be sure. By the way, guys, that expensive pelt gauge that uh, measures layers, it's having a hard, harder and harder time doing so with the um, clear coat being switched over from solvent to water-based, which um, is what they call a wet-on-wet -wet layer, and it's hard for the gauge to tell those layers apart. So. Yeah, it's what paint systems are coming to. I'm not a huge fan, but it is what it is. So if you have one-step polishes, such as 3D1 or Papa Cut, just surround yourself with quality pads, such as I have here, the Eurofiber 5050 pad, a uh, ultra-fine DA from Roops, uh, Lake Country's polishing pads, uh, some cutting pads, and you'll be perfectly fine. I hope this helps, guys. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments section, and I'll catch you in the next video.